Hey there, my name is Joe Barnard, and today we're going to talk about the Falcon Heavy second stage. And specifically, we're talking about the 148th scale model of the whole SpaceX Falcon Heavy that I'm building. Each stage has a flight computer and thrust vectoring mount, so it can fly just like the real thing, lifting off really slowly and staging up as it goes. I recently had a test launch of this second stage, and it didn't go so well. So in this video, we're going to talk about why that happened. Before we get started, if you're feeling lost or don't understand what's going on, that's okay. There's a whole video series coming out this fall that's going to explain all of the terminology that I'm talking about, as well as sort of teach how to do propulsive landing in model rockets, all of the specifics. We'll talk about that later, but for now, let's get into it. The first three things to consider are the vehicle's moment arm, its inertia, and its thrust. So, first, the moment arm, which is 17 centimeters. This is the distance between the thrust vectoring mount and the center of mass. So when the thrust vectoring mount commands a gimbal angle in the motor, that's where the force is applied so that it can rotate the whole vehicle. The second thing is the inertia. This vehicle has a really small inertia. It is, if you want the specific, I think it's about 0 0.081. Okay, I got it wrong. Um, it's 0 0.018 kilograms per meter squared. Sorry, back to the video. And if you don't know what inertia is, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. Okay, and the third thing is the thrust, which is 15 newtons. So relative to the second stage, the thrust is high, the mass moment of inertia is low, and the moment arm is small. All of these things work together to make it very hard for the signal flight computer to actually control the rocket in flight. So let's look at the first part where the rocket arcs over to the left at launch. You'll notice that the vehicle does correct itself after launching, but why does it do this? Why does it arc over like this after leaving the launch pad? And even still, why don't we see this happening with the other rockets that I build? The answer is basically that the thrust is high and the inertia is low. Because the vehicle is so tiny and easy to move, with a high thrust, any misalignment in the thrust vectoring mount is going to result in the vehicle pitching over like that. The second thing that I want to look at is just the rocket itself. This thing should not be flying. There is so much surface area up here, and there's none down here. There are no control surfaces. There's no way to battle all of the drag that happens above the center of mass. So after about T plus two seconds, when the drag on the top of the vehicle gets high enough, the thrust vectoring mount just can't counter those aero forces anymore, and the vehicle loses control. Right as this happens, Signal figures out that something's going wrong and calls an in-flight abort, popping the fairing open. That said, you might notice that the parachutes didn't actually come out. They were still stuck in the fireproof blanket, when the rocket came down to the ground. This is mostly an error on my part. I packed the parachutes wrong so that as soon as the fairing came apart, it didn't fully separate. The good news though, is that this is just a model rocket. These are all plastic parts and the grass was so tall in the field that it just came down gently. To wrap this up, I wanna think about what we can do to make this fly a little bit better. And what this equates to is basically adding fins down at the bottom. Now these could be deployable fins. They could be really long rods coming out of the bottom of the vehicle. We have a couple options here. The second thing is that I'm not sure the PID gains for the thrust vector control system were really ideal. This vehicle is so hard to control that the signal application actually rejected the tuning values that I put in the app and said the vehicle would be unsafe to fly. I think there's probably room to get more optimal PID gains to control the vehicle, but it's going to take a little bit of simulation work. Lastly, I just want to say if you have ideas or if you have thoughts on how to control this vehicle better, leave them in the comments below or reach out via bps.space contact. Now before we go, there are a few cool things that we can look at here. Um, the first is the z-axis acceleration uh, data from the flight computer. Now the z-axis is the long axis, this is where we're going to see the thrust curve and things like that. You can actually notice here, there is a big vibration where the flight aborts, that's when the fairing separates. I think that's pretty cool. The next cool thing is the abort settings on the vehicle. So every time that signal starts up, it logs all of these settings into the flight computer. And specifically what we're looking at here is these three settings here. These are the abort settings. So here you can see that in-flight abort is enabled. The trigger is at 35 degrees pitched over on the X or Y axis and the abort system will safe. It will turn off after 2.25 seconds. So if we take a look at this plot here, we can see the orientation on one axis and then when the abort goes from a zero to a one, that's just the state of the abort system, meaning that when it shifts, that's when we're popping out those parachutes and declaring the flight is no good. 
It's also kind of cool to look at the x-axis orientation versus the thrust vector control. We can see as the vehicle pitches over, the thrust vector control mount tries to command a higher and higher gimbal angle to correct for the orientation. That's just something that's neat to look at. Anyway, before I end the video here, I want to give a big thanks to everyone who's supporting BPS on Patreon. Projects like the Falcon Heavy, landing these model rockets, all of this experimental stuff would not be possible without their help. Between all of the motors that are burned, and all of the software that needs to be written, and all of this hardware that needs to be developed, this stuff gets really expensive, and it just wouldn't be possible without the people there. If you're interested in supporting, there's a link in the description down below, and thank you very much for watching.